Do you know what one of my favorite sounds is? That one right there. Absolutely one of my favorite sounds in all of video games is the Game Boy startup sound. And I wanted to take the opportunity today to talk to you guys about the Game Boy, one of my favorite consoles of all time, something that I used to play constantly. In fact, when I got my Game Boy in 1989, I actually got more regular play than my NES did. Today, we are looking at 10 games on the Game Boy that I am still playing in 2023, and we are kicking things off with a tomato. Okay, I promise we are going to talk about the tomato, but I want to start off by letting you guys know that I am not going to be talking about Link's Awakening, Mario Land the Six Golden Coins, Tetris, or Wario Land 3, and that's because that should be on everybody's list. Those games are fantastic, they're some of the best of all time, and that just wouldn't really be a me list, you know? That would be a list for everybody, and this is the games I keep coming back to, plus those four! So, yeah, those still are out there, but there, there's more than just those four games on the Game Boy. Now, now we're talking about the tomato. That's right, it's tomato season time, and we are talking about a game that was, I mean, released by Acclaim, but developed by Atlas. Yes, the guys behind Persona and Shimigami Tensei comes Quirk, a game about a punk rock tomato. It's an awesome puzzle game. I really enjoy this one, and it's as simple as can be. You're just... You know, moving spinny things and sliding blocks around and filling in gaps so you can make your way to the stairs. And every once in a while, you got to tag team in someone else to help you move stuff around. And it's a great game. Like, it's super simple. And I really wish that this is something that I was better at. But I think my logic has kind of just degraded since I was a kid. But this is something I played very frequently when I was younger. And I used to be able to fly through levels. And as you guys can see from the footage, that is no longer the case. Uh, it, it's, it's a really good game, though. If you haven't played Quirk, one of the real things I really like about this is that even though this was developed by Atlas, bonus, it's not a stupid expensive game. Loose, it's only a $10 cart, and complete in box, it's 40 bucks. so you can add an awesome Atlas game to your collection from the list of fantastic titles they released on the Game Boy and the NES. Check out Quirk if you haven't done so already. Aside from Super Mario Land, Follow the Foot Clan, and Tetris, Motocross Maniacs is the game that I had the most playtime on the first year I owned my Game Boy. This was probably my favorite game of all of them just because it was something completely different than anything I'd ever really played before. I'd done some time with Excite Bike, but this was Excite Bike to the 10th degree. You had loop the loops, you had crazy nitrous boosts that you were able to launch yourself off of ramps, you had awesome challenges and crazy, like, physics puzzles where you had to just flip the bike right in order to keep driving to get onto the upper levels. It was just such a wonderful game, and it kind of prepped me for liking games today like Trials. And it still plays great today, like getting back to it now and jumping back into it, the muscle memory just kicked in and it was just like riding a bike, for lack of a better term. It's a wonderful game. There were a lot of attempts on the original Game Boy to put out platforming versions on the Game Boy of games from the NES, and I don't think any of them were really quite as successful as Ninja Gaiden Shadow. The Mega Man games are very close, and I really was almost putting them on this list, but Ninja Gaiden Shadow just nailed it. It plays beautifully well. The look is spectacular. The challenge is really high. It's just like a Ninja Gaiden game. Go figure. And it plays so close to the NES originals that you can just drop in and enjoy it. That's a rare thing to find. Usually there's a lot of limitations in play where it doesn't quite feel perfect when you compare it to what the NES game, its big brother, was like. This one's pretty close, though. This is a really solid title, a lot of fun with a great challenge and a fantastic look with some spectacular gameplay. And I'm not sure a lot of people have actually played this one. This feels like something that a lot of folks might have overlooked, so... If you're a Ninja Gaiden fan, be sure to check out Ninja Gaiden Shadow. While we didn't get a proper Final Fantasy game on the Game Boy, we did get Final Fantasy Legend, and that was the introduction in a roundabout way to one of my favorite Square IPs, and that is the Saga series. You're able to create a party of four different characters utilizing a bunch of different options. You have humans and mutants, and then a bunch of different monsters that you're able to add to your party. And the game is just 
a really well-designed RPG. Now, it's not a Final Fantasy game, and that is critical. So if you're going into this expecting a Final Fantasy-esque story, you're not going to get that. This is a game where you're going through it to try to transform your characters, to find different monsters and robots to fight and eat, believe it or not. Like, you actually eat their meat in order to change. It's a weird game. The mechanics are great, though. I really do like the story in this one, but it is decidedly not a Final Fantasy game, so understand that. And I really, really like the soundtrack to it. This is a wonderful title, and it's just a lot of fun to play. Like, this is one that... I remember when I initially got it, I was kind of bummed because I was expecting Final Fantasy 1, and instead, playing it for a little while, I got something that was so much better. One of Shigeru Miyamoto's best games is a little game on the Game Boy called Mole Mania. First off, Nintendo, where's our sequel? We need a sequel to Mole Mania. This game is absolutely brilliant. You play as a mole, go figure, and your job is to make your way through these different puzzle levels by digging your way up from underground to avoid enemies or to be able to pop up and grab an item and attack an enemy with it. It's deceptively simple. Like, on paper, it's the best part of what every Miyamoto game is a very basic premise, but the gameplay and the level designs add the complexities. And that's really what you need, especially on the Game Boy. One of the things I really like about this game is that the levels are static. You do go to different parts of the levels, but the ones you're working on don't move, so you avoid any of the ghosting that would appear on levels that have a lot of scrolling in the background. So rather than kind of getting distracted by ghost images on a puzzle game, you just have one screen to work with. It works incredibly well. The puzzles are deceptively difficult, but they're really fun to solve, and there's a great sense of accomplishment when you finally do. Mole Mania is a legit unsung classic on the Game Boy, and if you haven't played it, you need to. I've talked about Donkey Kong for the Game Boy several times on my channel in the past, and I want to reiterate how great of a title this is. So not only do you get the classic Donkey Kong on here, or at least a adequate enough version of it based on the limited size of the Game Boy screen, you also get our introduction to what would eventually become the Mario vs. Donkey Kong series on the Game Boy Advance. After you beat those first four levels of classic Donkey Kong, you start getting puzzle fights. And they're fantastic. You have different jumping abilities for Mario. You're able to pick objects up and throw them at bad guys. You're able to grab hammers and kill the bad guys and try to make your way across the map without getting electrocuted or falling too far or having someone just pop up on the screen and attack you. It's a really fantastic title. It's probably my favorite version of Donkey Kong across the board. Like, as much as I love the arcade original in the NES release, I actually think this is my favorite one because it had the audacity to try something different. And that's really cool. I started my journey with Pokemon on Pokemon Blue, but my favorite version of that Gen 1 release was Pokemon Yellow. As great as those original games were, Red and Blue, Pokemon Yellow did something really special. It embraced the anime side of things as well. It wasn't just strictly the game universe. They brought in the anime aspect, and I really appreciated that. I thought it was wonderful to have Pikachu follow you around as opposed to just staying in a Pokeball. I liked that Team Rocket looked like Jesse and James from the show. I liked the different options that were added, like surfing Pikachu and things like that, that made the game a little bit more lighthearted than the original ones. And I really loved playing this on its initial release, and I love playing it today. I've got both the original Game Boy Kart as well as owning it on my 3DS Virtual Console. This game is so good. This is Burger Time Deluxe, and... While it doesn't stray very far from the original concept of what Burger Time does, it's just a great title to play. It works. It shouldn't. It is incredibly cramped on the small Game Boy screen, but it just works and it plays brilliantly well. You're Peter Pepper. You are the chef making the burgers. And first off, I wouldn't eat at his restaurant. He has to walk on all the food in order to get it to the burger serving station. I, is that? I don't... Maybe that is a burger serving station. I'm not sure. Regardless, I wouldn't eat there. I don't think his place has a health certification. Anyway, this is Burger Time Deluxe. I really love this game. It's a great version of Burger Time. It's a faithful adaptation 
with a spin, with a twist, with a... It's burger time with a little bit of stank on it. And it's really fun. It's a great playing game. It looks good for what it is, despite the fact that that screen is cramped down. And the challenge is absolutely there. It's a great puzzle platformer with some really fun just gameplay. Like, this is a great arcade game, and to have it portably on the Game Boy was an absolute treat. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Follow the Foot Clan is by no means the best Ninja Turtles handheld game ever made. Might be one of the worst, if I'm being honest with you, but there's a lot of nostalgia goggles happening with this game that makes me love it. This was something that I used to play constantly when I was younger, and it's something that when I picked the game back up, I immediately just fell back into adoring everything about the game and dove deep on the title. And, well, not super deep, let's be honest. It's not a terribly long game. I think I beat it in like two hours, but it's a super fun game. I really like it. I think it looks really good for what it is. I mean, all the turtles look the same, and the weapons don't really look like the weapons, and the boss fights aren't exactly challenging, and... Level designs leave a lot to be desired, but I still love the game. I know it sounds like I don't like it, but I actually think it's a really fun title. It's something I go back to pretty regularly because it doesn't require a lot of brain power to enjoy it. You can just kind of turn it on, tune in, and tune out. Have a good time. Sometimes that's all you really need. Okay, now while Tetris didn't make the list because it would have been on everybody's list, and I already explained that part. This one does make the list, and this is one of my absolute favorite puzzle games of all time. And as much as I love the NES original release of Dr. Mario, I actually prefer the Game Boy version of it. I think that they really made magic here with this Game Boy release. Like, it is designed perfectly for the Game Boy screen. And while they don't have those bright, vivid colors that they had on the NES release... The shades that they add to the different viruses and the different pills just make it super easy to play, and I can't state enough how much I appreciate that. This is a game I played constantly when I was a kid, and I lost it along the way, and this is actually probably the first retro game that I bought that got me started back into collecting retro games when we moved up here to Michigan. My wife and I went to an estate sale, and there it was for like three bucks, and I grabbed it then. Again, it is my preferred way to play this game, and it is actually my preferred version of these kind of dropper puzzle games. I like this even more than I like Tetris. There you have it, my friends. 10 Game Boy games that I am still playing in 2023. I really think the Game Boy library holds up incredibly well. I am stoked that we just got the Game Boy added to the Switch Online service, but something to be said about the OG handheld. And yeah, I mean, this is a color, but it's close enough to OG. Let me know in the comments down below what games are you still playing now 30 years after its initial release. If you're new here, you dug this video, click that subscribe button. I'd love to have you stick around. I'm going to be at the Midwest Gaming Classic at the end of March. If you are there and you see me, Say hi, I got a sticker for you. Till next time, remember to play more games, stay square, and take care. I'll talk to you soon.